Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So, test, 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 test.
about two minutes like here or here. Hey, that's great. Hey, how are you? Great. This is it doesn't seem like that's working. I didn't know you were yeah. here today. Did you confirm with someone? Oh, no, 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 all right let's get started hi how is everyone so this mic's not working Ladies, are you ready? I got the Dominican Republic. Yeah? Oh, the Dominican Republic is is amazing. Okay, so the hopefully Zoomers, you can hear this because uh, we're we're working on some of the mic stuff. So the mic is for Zoom. I know it's not gonna, you won't hear any different through here. So hopefully Zoomers, you can hear all this just great. And um, welcome back from Christmas break and uh, did anyone like anyone work through the whole thing? Hopefully not like completely. I know there's always, there's some, right? Yeah. Well, that could be a good thing, but hopefully you still got sufficient amount of family time. Uh, still questionable. Well, no, I just had, a, I just had something great happen though. Which yeah. I will share the good news that because I started doing some more social media yeah, I love here, share, share on here. So we got a few people on Zoom. I started, um, I hired this new social media company um, that I, I'm sure they're great price, but to me, it's a lot of money to spend on social media. And it's it, yeah, you won't hear okay. it, but the Zoomers should hear it. Anyway, I just wanted, I didn't know how it was working. You don't really know how that's working, right? Unless someone specifically reaches out to you. And so I had this guy who I went to high school with I did not know where he lived. He wasn't on any of my mailing list, but he was friends with me on Facebook and he connected and he said, Hey, I've used the last, uh, the last three homes I've sold. I've used the same realtor, but I've really enjoyed your social media lately. And I want to talk to you and he's interviewed both of us though. So I'm going up against the, the other guy that he's used three times in a row. So I don't know if I'll end up getting it. I hope I will. You will. But who knows? Who knows? But it, that makes me feel good about the social media. Fifteen hundred. <laughs> well, it includes like a whole photo shoot every month, and like videos, and it's all con. It's all very personal content. Yes. Awesome. Excellent. We're making sure we have a bunch of copies for everyone. Um, anything else that's been amazing over the break? Wanting to share? No? We have a few new. I don't recognize your guys' faces. Are you guys new? I'm putting you on the spot. 
Oh, okay. And she's not even here, Robin. I know, I was going to say, she probably, she's probably here in some capacity. Okay, welcome. Yep. Okay, awesome. I know, I was going to say, wait, I recognize all the rest of the faces, but. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, we've got a few things want to share. Let's see if our sound is going to work on this. Okay, at least through the the TVs. Hey, do you know how you can tell that you watch too much TV? How? Oh. I'm entering this lady's renter's insurance. It's Liberty Mutual, and I'm going, hey, Liberty, Liberty. And I went, oh, okay. crap. Ooh, awesome. Okay. Did everyone hear that? Who's not who's not already signed up for family reunion that that needs to still? Um Say that again, and also say you were not paid to say any of this. No, I was not paid to say any of this. This is Patria. I was just saying, if you're not taking advantage of going to family reunion, not paid to say this. Because it's in Vegas, it is so much cheaper to go and really experience it, so you'll be addicted from then on. So yes. I took four years before I went to my first family reunion, and I wished I had done it year one. Um, and it means money. It means money. You're spending money, but it means money. And it's also the cheapest one with possibly, yeah. Um, I, myself, have probably been to like, I don't know, maybe somewhere around seven to 10 of these, including Mega Camp. And this is possibly one of the, like, I don't know, we'll see until after, but it seems like they are packing it with value and the people that they're bringing there. And it's probably the least expensive with it being close. So, if you haven't, you're thinking you're going to do it. You're thinking about it. Okay. Um, at, at home goods. <laughs> well, that is. Um, Okay, it's going to be amazing. That's what the uh, this slide was supposed to do is hype you up, at least just introduce it if you haven't seen it already. But we have over 50 people from our office already signed up and going. So it will be amazing. And we like to do things while we're there. Um, it, we have a, a group me chat already formed. If you're not already on it and you're signed up, we want to make sure that you get on there. So send me a message. Let me know. Um, cause we'll be using that to communicate while we're there, um, just with our large numbers. Okay. Um, wanted to, uh, introduce, uh, Brian, do you want to come up here real quick? We haven't had a chance to really get to know each other, but, uh, Brian, why don't you tell us a few of the changes, uh, and yeah. what, what we need to know from you guys. Awesome. Well, happy new year, everybody. Hope it was great. I'm Brian Miyasaki. So. Who all here knew Josh? Cavalier. Okay, probably a lot of you. So Josh is starting a new venture on his own, a restoration company. He's still going to be with us for a little while as he's as he's making that transition. I've been covering Utah County down to St. George uh, for about a year and a half for Silverback, but I live about a quarter mile up the road. And so I absorbed part of South Salt Lake just because it made sense. Um, and so I'll be your new rep for Silverback for this year and beyond. So looking forward to getting to know everybody. Um, as far as Silverback is concerned, just quick, we aren't raising our prices. We are still at 400, 500, and 600. We still have our free service call coupons. We added outdoor sprinkler system coverage uh, to our King Kong plan. 
We are still making our welcome phone calls to everybody that gets a home warranty with us. So our communication is top notch and our plans are still right where they need to be. So if you have any questions, let me know. Again, look forward to getting to know you all. I'm horrible with names, so I'm going to try really hard. But uh, yeah, just look forward to, to getting to know you all. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Okay. A few things to have on your, um, on your agenda. So that uh, new year, if you're looking for ways to get back into things, we have uh, how to win and sell to investors specifically. This is January 9th, Tuesday. So next Tuesday, this will be um, a three hour elective. So we're doing this in place of our team meeting so that we're not kind of, I don't know, competing or just using your whole day. This is something that, so we're just scooting that time back a little bit. So make a note of that. Um, it is at the uh, at slick so location change as well so if you're not already um registered just register so we have a head count mainly yeah from one to four um at slick so it should you should already have that in your email if you don't then shoot me an email and then i can make sure that you guys have that but search through your emails first because we try to make sure everyone already has all this stuff uh next thing coming up there's a question somewhere. One to four. Uh, next thing coming up, we've got NLP. This is January 16th, 17th. This is the week after. Um, and that is, it's kind of like an all day event. That one is um, pretty amazing. We've got John Vandergens coming. He is trained certified in, um, in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Is it programming? Is that the P? Yeah. Thank you head nods, making sure I had that right. Um, and he and I, like we, we've done some coaching together um, and he is, he truly is amazing. So uh, if you want to put that on your schedule as well. And then today we've got, uh, we're going to go over goal execution and our plan workshop. So Aaron is helping me passing out some items. Um, let's see. We did, we did a lot of this in October. Who was here when we talked about this in October? Yes, yes, okay. So um, this is going to be for more or less, it's gonna be uh, somewhat of a repeat on that. So those that have already been here, you're either already a professional or uh, hopefully you've already been through this and you have some questions that um, that maybe you've gone gone through or that you're struggling with that we can that we can help you out with. Let me make sure that I'm sharing my screen for our Zoom friends. There we go. Okay. And this is we were kind of debating on. Um, what to do beginning of the year. This is something that really we try to focus on the end of last year so that we have the plan prepped and ready to go. But knowing the real estate occupation in general, we don't always have it planned out ahead of time, um, even if we have those things planned out. So this is meant to, um, if we don't already have goals, maybe you, maybe you set some goals and maybe some things change between now or between October, the fall, and, and now, and we want to set a few things uh, differently. So this is a chance to modify, dial in your goals, dial in your execution, dial in your plan uh, so that you can start off your great. Anyone have any questions or comments on any of that so far? I did get a lot of feedback on the last one that we did that it was it was beneficial at the time, and so I wanted to make sure we went through that again. Uh, so if you did come last time, and you have extra insight or maybe some questions, this will, it will help the other people uh, because this will be kind of a second round for you, okay? All right, so this is kind of on a separate piece of paper on the back of one. Um, you can use that, that exercise one. Um, I personally, I like getting things done in classes so that it's not just a learn for learning sake, but you actually have something that you feel like you've checked some boxes off for your business. Um, but these are a few questions that you, uh, that you should ask yourself in regards to your goal, your plan, your execution. So you can use, um, I would say 
Uh, some, some of this we'll kind of go through a little bit quicker. We went a little bit too fast last time, so we'll spend a little bit more time. Do you remember that, those that were here? Um, just because I was trying to honor time. So that's why I'm trying to jump straight into it. On the back of your page, or you can use your first exercise, um, this isn't covering your full, first exercise completely. We'll do that uh, in just a second. But So first of all, overall, what is your year goal? Um, we're in a business setting here at the office. So usually we're thinking about a business goal, whether that's transactions or volume. Um, so the first thing that comes to your mind, what is that? that goal, okay? Hopefully it's something you've already thought about before now, and if not, then write down a couple and you can go through those. Um, ask yourself, what's important to you about that goal? And write this down. And I'm going to, I'll ask a brave soul at the end of, uh, I've got about five or six of these questions to maybe role play with me and, and just ask. Um, you can, I would use the back of, of a page. Yeah, those are fine. It, we'll go through this if you already know, but these questions aren't going to be exactly on, on exercise one. Yeah. This is just to kind of dial in your year goal, dial in that one goal, that one plan. Okay. So this part is often overlooked. Why is it important to you? Um, I've said this before and I'll say it again because it is true that um, logic makes you think and emotions make you act. Nick could have finished my sentence for me. Um, this is the emotion side of your goal. Why is it important to you? Um, and usually we have something in there that says, you know, would don't answer the, the answer that you think we need to hear or the correct answer. There's there's not a correct, there's not a right or wrong. Uh, most people think that, it, that you need to say, which this could be your true reason, but I need to be with my family or be with my kids. Maybe it's just you want to buy a boat. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if that's the goal, that's fine. Um, but get clear on what that boat means to you. Okay. Um, does that boat mean prestige? Does it mean pride? That's okay. It's you. It's your goal. Does it mean time spent with your family? Does it mean um, you get that, you get to hone in your wakeboarding skills for competition coming up? All these things, there's no right or wrong, okay? The important thing is, is maybe not exactly what it is, but why is that important to you? Anyone have questions on this slide? The why? Okay. All right. Ask yourself and write down what will happen if you don't reach it. If you don't reach that one goal that you wrote down on the first slide. What will happen if you don't reach that goal? This next question should be a gut reaction, their first answer. You shouldn't have to take long to answer this. It's a yes or no. If you don't reach that goal, are you okay with it? I'll challenge you if you're if the answer to that is no, or if the answer to that is yes, um, that that you're okay not reaching that goal, then the why going back two slides, the why is not meaningful enough to you. Either the reward or the pain associated with that goal of not achieving it is not a big enough reward or a big enough pain 
to get you to act or to do the things that you know you will, will need to do. Does that make sense? So again, it's the, it's the emotion side of it. That emotion, if you're okay with it, I'll challenge you to, if, if the answer to, yeah, I'm okay if I don't make, a lot of people, they'll, they'll come in my office and say, this isn't anyone specific, but just throwing out numbers. I want to make 500,000. Um, are you okay if you don't make that? Yeah, I'm okay with it because I'll still be fine if I make 300. Okay, well, um, what if you make 200? Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. What about 100? Ah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe 65. No, definitely not. So when you're thinking about this, there is a need goal and then there is a want goal. We want you to want the want goal, but there needs to be an emotion tied to that. So this is the gap between that need goal in this quick raw example of 65,000 to 500,000. That's a huge gap, right? Usually what you'll find is you'll land somewhere in the middle. You'll, you'll figure out whatever you need to do to make that 65 grand. But in order to make that 100, 2, 300, up to 500,000, you've got to have the emotion behind the reason why you're going to strive for that goal. Any other thoughts or comments on that? Anyone uh, had experience with that, where that emotion has carried them to that, that next level goal? What I mean by that next level goal is, is my need goal, my want goal, is that 500. You'll be just fine if you make two or 300,000, you'll be happy, right? But to re actually reach your goal, you need to have that emotion, that tie. Has anyone had experience reaching that second tier goal that they're willing to share? Nick? Yeah. I would go back. Uh, yeah. yeah, I actually, I don't have a really current experience, which is kind of making me think about my life. <laughs> but the, my second year in real estate was pretty cool. And I had only sold three deals the year prior. And then I was at a mega camp and it was me, Emily Hayes and me and Boyd. And we were sitting there, we were talking about something and Emily Hayes said that she was going to sell 20 houses that year. And we had both sold maybe five or seven and it was in August because it was at mega camp. And she's like, Oh, I'm going to sell 20. And I was in my head. I thought there's no way, but then what came out was, yeah, me too. And we just, we, for whatever reason, I think we just got excited about it. We were just enthused about the goal and we both, I actually sold 19 and she sold 20. So not super surprising. She beat me on that one, but, um, but anyways, like that's one time where we just put the line in the sand. We worked all the weekends, all the nights, did whatever it took. And then we both hit what seemed to be a pretty big goal for us at the time, just in a matter of like three or four months. So. Yeah, we were both around like six or seven and that was in August. And we had, we ended up closing 19 and 20 by December. So that's awesome. Isn't that, that is, let's, let's give him some love on that. I remember I joined the, I joined the office, the office, um, the February after that. And, um, Nick and Emily, they were, they were big deals for what they had accomplished. And you deserve, you deserve kudos for that. I remember joining the office, the energy that you guys had and the direction you were heading, you guys just kept building from there. So I, you've always been a good example to me. I appreciate that, Nick. Anyone else have a, have a comment? Yeah. Yeah. Experience. Yep. Um, I feel like any time that I've been able to get to that second tier, my why hasn't been based on necessarily like survival. It's been more based on like, I can't, I can no longer stay where I am. And um, there's been a few times in my life where I've hit that point. And one was right before I got into the mortgage industry. Um, I just knew that I could, like, it didn't matter what I had to do next. I just couldn't be where I was anymore. And I did that again um, just this year in um, August. It was, it was September. And I, um, I had for three years, ever since 2020, 
you guys have probably heard of the 75 hard program. Anyway, I mean, I've just wanted to do it for three years. And um, I feel like I kind of went through a funk for a few years. And in September, I had a couple of experiences that made me know that I could no longer stay where I was. Like, I just couldn't stay there anymore. And that was a thing that I had been wanting to do for a long time. And it was interesting because every single day, like as I would do, as I would do the tasks that I was supposed to do, I knew I, like I had to do them because I couldn't go back. Like I couldn't be that same person that I was before. So as I'm like writing my goal today, I'm kind of feeling that same way. I'm feeling like I have to accomplish this goal because I can't be the same person that I was this year. Yeah. And that often is like what my why is or what motivates me where I feel that, that pain. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, can I make a few observations? Uh, they're all positive, by the way. Um, <clears throat> usually, usually it's like, all right, so here's where you're wrong. No, none of that. <laughs> yeah, none of that. It's actually a good example. So um, in listening to that, what I heard, I try to just listen. You know, I had my eyes open, but just kind of like close your eyes and think that was a whole journal entry, right? Um, she's talking to herself, her past self, giving her experience. And she told herself multiple times, whether you actually wrote it down or not, but that is a journal entry saying, I, I can't be the same person I was yesterday. I need to change. And she was talking in absolutes. And so I, I think that's an example of think about what you wrote down. Is it one, is it a journal entry? Are you digging deep into your soul? And um, are you saying more things like, yeah, I want a boat, just using that example still, or I need a boat. That's different. I want $65,000. No, I need $65,000. I want $500,000. How do you change your mindset to, I need $500,000 um, for whatever reason that is so that you um, so you can bridge that gap in your own mind. This is all mindset. The whole year, what Nick's example, he sold, what'd you say, four, seven, seven up till August, six or seven, and then almost tripled that, uh, sold or sold twice as much the next uh, two or three months. That's incredible. Like that is mindset. That is a switch inside. And everything that you want to do this year is simply a switch inside. And just listen to the way that you're talking to yourself, your own journal entry whatever you wrote down. And if you need to expound on that, I like, that's, I'll encourage you to do this because that, that piece of the puzzle is possibly the most important piece. And we often go way too fast and we overlook it. Listen to the words you use and do you believe your words? Um, are you talking in absolutes? Are you talking in, yeah, I'd like this, or I want this um, compared to I can't, I, I will no longer be the person I was yesterday. I have to change in order to reach that. I'm, I've got one right here and I'll come back to, to you, Lisa. Do you still have your thought? Okay. Well, I was just thinking about what you were saying about, I want 500,000, right? And we all have these goals, hi friend. We all have these goals about what we want. And it, it occurred to me uh, over the last couple of weeks that I've been thinking about the new year and goals and things that if we don't define what we're going to do with that, like, why do you want 500,000? Is it because, and you have it all, I'm buying a boat, I'm buying a property, I'm doing this, this, and this. It really defines your why when you define what you're going to do with that goal, right? So you want a boat because every Sunday I want to go out on the lake with my family because I want those memories with my kids because I, my family needs this unity or whatever it is. I feel like we can get caught up in, um, I want a boat, I want 500,000, I want this or that. And we're just sort of like feeding the ego, right? I don't, I don't think we set these goals truly because we're feeding our ego. I think there's something deeper, but we haven't gotten down deep into it and sort of um, written it out, defined it so that we can get past the ego and get to like what our soul really wants with this yeah. goal. And that helps you, propels you every day to make your calls, to send your text messages, to follow up, to, to, to grind away and do what you need to do because truly there's something bigger and more important behind that goal. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Lisa, do you still have a thought? Okay. So um, I joined the KW Wealth Community and they going to 75 hard, they actually created a KW Wealth 75 hard challenge for this year. And it just breaks down like, you know, read a book for 45 minutes that it's on finance or business or money and take 45 minutes a day and take a course or listen to a mentor, um, like a, a podcast or a YouTube guru that does talks about money and how to make money and all of that. So anyway, it just has all these things like 75 hard, all these little goals, right? And what I love about, you know, doing the planning is that we don't have to focus on the huge goal that might be overwhelming is we can focus on all the little goals that we're going to make that will get us to that big goal, right? Because sometimes I get overwhelmed thinking $500,000, oh, I'm never going to be able to make that money. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, on that note, so I'm, I'm going to write down, this is my email. Um, if you would like, um, so I'll show you in a second, a bunch of the resources that I put together just for, for this as well. Um, some people already, uh, from the last meeting, I sent all these to you. If you want it, then send me an email, um, and I'll reply with, with this, uh, this link that I've collected all those. And if you want, Lisa, you're welcome to send that to me and I'd be happy to forward, if that's easier for you, or you can send it to everyone, whatever you want to do. All right, so we asked, we answered this question. Are you okay with that? Um, are, you, are you clear on what it will take to reach your goal? Um, this is a whole, like this, this you can dive into a whole, um, I don't wanna say tangent, but for, for today, it's a tangent. Um, this is the business planning clinic. This is essentially, um, if I wanna make 500,000, that means I know exactly how many contacts I need to make today. And every day for however many days I plan on working that year. Um, I don't know about you guys. I don't work 365 days in a year. Um, I honestly, I try to keep it under 200. So know how much you're going to work. And, um, and that way you can break down what you need to do each day. So once you're clear on what it will take to reach your goal, um, what will you get? What will get in the way of reaching that? What will stop you? Sometimes it's the things that are closest to you and it's not right or wrong. Some like, I know that working from my house, my kids stop me from getting my stuff done and I love them. But that's why I come here. What will get in the way? Sometimes it could be simple answers, maybe transportation. I don't know. Maybe you need a, you don't have a car, you need a car. That's, most of us are past that uh, one, but just little things like that. Okay. And then are you willing to do what it takes to reach your goal? Um, I shared this last time. This is personal to me and I, um, I do share it because I, I feel like the, the ones that are genuine are the best uh, examples, but this one for me a few years ago was um, I had a goal to pay off the mortgage on my house. And um, I was being a big thinker. I know I had like 250,000 left on there. Maybe it was somewhere around 200 or something. Um, I was thinking, all right, how do I pay that off in one year? And up to this point, I had only made like maybe a max of two, somewhere in that two to 300 range as far as an income. So that's not enough money right? In order to pay that off and still pay all of your taxes and charity, tithing, your expenses on your life and still have enough left over. Um, I realized in one, I mapped it all out and said, no, I'm not willing to say yes to this in order to say no to my kids, my family time in order to reach the goal. I do it. Yes, I believe in myself, but I'm not willing to do it. So this is a crucial part of the step. 
knowing what it will take, are you willing to do it? Because once you commit to it, you've got to commit, not to other people, but to yourself. And it will be really easy to jump off of that commitment if you set a goal that you find out later, wait, I'm saying no to all these other things that I didn't realize. So I'm not actually comfortable with this, you know, two or three months down the road. Um, figure all that stuff out today. You can, you can decide that. Figure out how much time it's going to take, how much time it'll take away from your family or the other things that are important to you, and are you willing to do it? Because you don't want to stop before you've even started. In this scenario, I decided to switch, change my goal from one year to two years. Um, and, and that made the difference. It was still an incredibly difficult goal for me, but that did launch my business forward. I mean, all the other byproducts of, of that, that goal made the difference. Um, and to this day, that was probably one of the things that were uh, one of the most challenging things uh, for me and very emotional. Uh, it's kind of one of those like, crossing the finish line of a marathon moment uh, for me in regards to just business and effort. So, um, okay. Anyone have any thoughts or questions on, on this? All right. This freeze? No. Yep. And after you accomplished that goal, is there anything else that you felt that much like desire to accomplish because it seems to me like in my life I you know I cleaned up my house and it was like <laughs> well your your desires your desires and your priorities change it's always in flux and um to answer your question for me yes my my priorities changed it was more because I kept telling my wife my wife and my family they were a part of this goal too uh we had our chart that we filled in our squares and, you know, finally reached to the end to know how, how much we needed to do and, and pay it off. Um, and I remember I kept telling her, okay, I'm going to be in the grind now. So I won't have to be in the grind later. So yeah, I had, my, my priorities changed intentionally because this is kind of where that first exercise comes in is what's your five-year goal um, or your someday goal so that you can evolve and change over time. Personally, I don't want to be in the grind every day for the rest of my life. Um, so yeah, my, my party has changed for me. It flipped a little bit more towards, okay, now I want to invest. I want my money to work more for me. And now I've got the momentum in my business to where I don't have to spend as much time in my business as, as I did while building that up. Um, so yeah, it changed and was intentional. Well, it's possible you have everything you want. Um, it's kind of like we all just went Christmas uh, shopping for possibly our parents or that one sibling that, how do you buy something for someone who has everything? Uh, for me, I've got several in my family that are like that. I was like, I have no idea what to get you. And maybe, maybe that's some self-reflection uh, inside that you've got to decide, do I have everything I want? buying a new house which i will have a new mortgage now so, <laughs> so, I, I really really right. yes. so now i have that again but it's also a competition like you want to be yes i do want to it's been a lot of goals. but do i want to do that forever no right now if, yeah. if you know someone's here yeah. that's yeah. true yep good question comment no no, it's not on for the room, but the Zoomers are hearing it. Yeah, we're fixing some of the stuff here. Yeah. You just heard it, heard it right here. Um, and I know, I know some of you guys that have some big goals beyond real estate. And, um, those, those are some things that can push you when you have everything. It might be, what is that next step? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a visitor. 
you made it. And I really like what you said back here. That it really comes down to, like, you can say, I want a boat or I want $500,000, but as soon as you get rejection, you go, I don't really want the boat. Yeah. I'm done. But if you picture that boat and the things that you're looking for, okay, then the rejection. I remember the first time I got rejection when I was 22 years old building a business. And, you know, the reason why I wanted to build a business, and I may get a little but emotional here, but uh, um, is I, I listened to something uh, from Ed Milet today, and it actually clicked for me. I was like, oh, my goodness, that was my why. It, and 22 years old, Ed Milet um, said, you need to break the bond of poverty. Think of everyone in your past. The reason why you're where you are right now is no one did it. You can be the one to break bonds of poverty and just life that's not meaningful and just like going through your life like a, a robot, you know, and then you end and it's over, done. And and so at 22 years old, I was like, I'm tired of poverty. I'm tired of my everyone around me having nothing and just arguments about money and everything else and you know what i was like man i'm going to change things at 22 years old and by 24 i had and uh and but at 22 years old a thing had to happen and it was rejection i went to a person i pitched him uh, an idea um uh he totally rejected me and i went to my car and I was, I had a choice to make. Do I want to change my life or do I just submit? And I kind of emotionally broke down in my car and I just went, no, I don't care what he says. I'm going to listen to people that are going to give me success. I'm going to do what it takes to be successful, no matter what it takes. And two years later, I, I hit the top. And, and that's what it takes. It takes rejection. It, it, you have to get the rejection to get the emotion, to get the, the, the drive to say, this is going to happen. Yeah. You became a different person overnight. Yeah. It, instantaneously, instantaneously, right? Yeah. That, um, that's how you reacted. That's right. Thank you. Yes. Yep. We can't hear. That one's that battery's dying. So just in case. <laughs> um, we set these goals every year, whatever. And sometimes I think we set goals from this place of last year, I did this in my business. This year, I want to do this in my business. Instead of from the place of what do I really want? And I, I'm not going to speak for Jen, but I'm just going to use her as an example. If like, if she was somebody else, because I know Jen and this isn't her, but let's say that Jen set a goal last year to hit 500 GCI. She hit the goal. And then she was like, I paid off my house. I did all this. And now she's like, you know what? I want to spend more time dancing. I want to spend more time with my kids. Those are my goals. I feel like we're in this society that wants us to believe that our success comes from our business, the amount of money we can make, the amount we can provide. And, and I want to tell you all that that's a lie. Your goal should be centered around what you deep down need to feel peace. And for a lot of people, that is money. But once you get that money, you need to ask yourself, 
what do I really want? You know, once you have that comfort, and maybe, maybe you want to help other people be successful. Maybe you want to help your kids be successful. Maybe you want to help other people who've never thought that they could get themselves and their family line and their generations out of poverty. And maybe that is through your business. But maybe it's not. And it's totally, totally okay to come to goal setting meetings and plannings and talk to your coaches and be like, I don't want the same things I wanted anymore. Like, let's just, let's be real. And let's set our goals based on what's really going to help us grow and become better. Yeah. What's going to feed your, your soul. Right. And that's Tyler, that's what I really appreciate about you. And I love about being here in this office is I truly feel like that's the energy here. Everyone here is to support your goals, whatever they are. Maybe you, maybe you sold 50 houses last year and this year, you're like, I only want to sell 30 because I want to spend more time on my boat with my family. And everyone here is like, that's awesome. You should do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, We've learned from you guys in here and so far I want to check in how has this, has this been beneficial use of your time so far today? Um, I can already tell you, we're not going to get through everything. Um, this is something that's going to be like, it's a, maybe this is a three hour thing. I don't know, but, um, you guys have all the tools and, uh, and all the exercises right here, but I do want to go through them. I'll share with you, this is the, where is it, right here. This is the uh, the drive folder that I put together. It has these questions and several other things. It's got a wealth and finance guide. It's got an accountability guide. It's got a goal setting retreat for you and a spouse or, um, this is where, yeah, email me and I'll send it to you. Um, I don't want to put an email together with everyone right here. So if you want it, do take the first step. There you go. Uh, send me an email. I will happily send it to you. Uh, this way it's easier for me to get it to you. Um, yeah, just say the goal, goal setting uh, drive. If you send it today, I'll know what you're talking about. Um, okay, so what I'll do is briefly go over real quick some of these, the exercise, and then see what questions you have so that you have uh, some time to go through this. But we won't spend a whole lot of time on this first one because I feel like we've done, we've done this. Um, but as a reminder, this is something that we've talked about before is uh, you can, you underestimate what you can accomplish in five years or in your case, two years from 22 to 24. Um, you under you underestimate what you can do in five years, uh, but sometimes we overestimate what we can do in one year. So in one year, we might set this really high goal and then think that our five-year goal is completely outlandish. Um, usually it is reverse. I know for myself that it usually is reverse. I usually set really big like one-year goals and I'm like, hey, in five years, where am I really gonna be? Um, but the growth that you can have in five years or two years or, or three years is, is absolutely incredible if you have the right mindset. And I think the thing that possibly what we, at least what I feel like I um, as, has been a great takeaway, you can tell me if you guys have felt this too, is we are already enough. We have everything we need inside of us. We are ready. Uh, maybe we need to hone in skills. Maybe we need to add this or that to our to our business plan or whatever that is. All of those are technical things. But as far as accomplishing the goal and making the decision um, and becoming that person, putting that other person behind us, um, that doesn't mean that you're, don't get rid of all your good things. Just choose who you want to be every single day. And you can make that choice. And if you get rejection or you get uh, you get stopped or you have those goals, then decide how you're going to react in that moment. And that becomes the new you. It's constantly in flux. Um, that's something that I feel like uh, we spent a little bit more time on the, maybe the mindset side of this, uh, which is the, the intro. Um, if I were to put a mental agenda in mind, 
Um, but that is the most important. The other things, the exercise, this is easy to go through and you can do in um, either here or on your own time. So let's go through these next ones. These, this is what you'll see in there and that you have printed out. Um, the whole concept of exercise one is what do I want in that five-year goal or maybe that someday goal? What will feed my soul that Anna was talking about? What will be, uh, what is that goal that truly my soul wants? Maybe not just uh, the physical or the pride side, which usually it's not, not usually all about pride um, or ego. And then break that down so that it's easier to know, all right, whatever I'm doing today, I know that this will get me to my someday goal or my five-year goal. So you're always on track. As long as you're doing the things, if you have these written down and you've thought through, what do I need to do today? If you go from the someday back to today, you will, you will reach your someday goal. And odds are you'll reach it sooner than you think. Uh, so that's the point of exercise one. Okay. Um, exercise two is just to break out uh, the personal side and your business side. Um, because we usually don't go and do go and work and do put all our efforts into business for business sake. It's usually to feed the personal side. It's to feed our soul, our desires. Like, why are we here today? Um, this isn't because we don't want to be home, hopefully not for everyone. Um, it's because we're trying to accomplish something to bring back home, to bring back into our personal lives. So make sure that we don't forget the personal side um, of our goals. So that's the, the purpose of exercise two. Exercise three is uh, GPS or 135. This is where you're going to uh, hone in on your 12 months, 12 month goal. Um, and if I were you, I would um, either make a copy um, or uh, print out another. Yeah, this you you'll be able to you'll be able to print and you'll have all of this that we were looking at, and also a guide and some other stuff that we're not even talking about today. If you uh, are interested in it. Um, so not only for a one year goal, but I think that's a, it's more effective to look at this in, in chunks of three months. So every 12 weeks, um, it's, it's harder to say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to put my plan together today, what I'm going to do in October. Um, but it's a lot easier to say in the first three months, I'm going to accomplish this. I know that if I accomplish this, I'll be on track for my one year goal. And then just focus on those first three months. Yeah, so, so 135 or GPS, um, G is goal, uh, your one goal. The P is priorities and the S is strategies. So 135, um, and this is why they're synonymous. So GPS, 135, and these, these are linked. So one goal for the year, three priorities that will get, that'll put you on in your focus to drive you towards that goal. And then the five strategies in each of those three. So you have 15 strategies all written down five times three. Um, and an example of that in real estate terms. So one goal, let's say we're going on, well, let's continue with our 500,000 in order to make 500,000. I need to sell a lot of houses. So maybe that's lead generation, right? The sales side of it. So one priority would be, um, I don't know, sales, okay? Um, lead generation is basically another way of saying that. So within lead generation, what are my five strategies? One could be my SOI. One could be my events with my SOI. One is social media, spending money on ads or paying someone to market. Um, Knocking doors, um, expires, fizzbos, all of that would be in the sales strategy. So you could have five, um, you could have 10 within the sales segment. You could have three, but make sure that if you only have two or three, that those three will uh, be enough to reach your goal. Yeah, this is um, what I'm explaining is, it, here's kind of a, you'll have to read all of this, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm breaking down. 
Yep. Yep. Um, a next goal would be, or a next priority, maybe it's um, education or skills. Um, I need to go to family reunion. I need to read 12 books a year, these 12 self-help books, or I need to uh, listen to Ed Milet podcast or the One Thing podcast or <clears throat> Millionaire Real Estate Agent. All of those would be in that segment, the strategies to increase that side. Okay. Anywhere, this is a really good question. Um, does anyone have more questions on the GPS slash 135? I know okay. it sounds elementary, but I would love to see like examples of like other people's just. Yeah. Wondering how, I'd, um, I'm trying to think of how soon. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's plenty of, um, so in KW Connect, we'll send you one, but this is a great way to find one yourself. Go to, um, there's so many resources that uh, I know I've felt this way. Like, man, I didn't even know that I had access to all that. Within KW Connect, um, if you log into your uh, KW, uh, type in GPS sample, for example, and I promise you there will be plenty on there. Okay. All right, the next exercise, and we'll end with this one, is a 411. Um, this is meant to break down. This is a part of, um, so this pretty much you have your one goal, then your GPS, and then your 411. The 411 basically is what are the, let's see, you see that up there. So this is my one goal for the month. Um, or sorry, my, yes, one goal. And then each week, what are the four things that I need to do to accomplish that? This is week one, two, three, four, um, in order to accomplish what I need to do that month. So basically it's another way of breaking down your larger goal into what do I need to do every single week to every single day to accomplish your goal. This, this is what makes those huge goals of maybe, maybe last year you made 300,000 and jumping to 500,000. That's a pretty big increase. Um, this is what helps you know exactly what you need to do every single day. This takes that huge goal and makes it manageable. Because the big goal of increasing by 200,000, almost, uh, almost 100% in, in business from one year to the next, that's, that's a big jump. But this will tell you, these are the things you need to do every day. When I, when I go through like, uh, I'll come to you in just one sec. Usually when you go through like, this is, this is my goal and then the number of contacts or what you have to do every single day, it is surprising how manageable it is. That's usually the aha if you've gone through that exercise that most people get is in order to make this much money, all I need to do is talk to five people a day. Talking to five people a day, let's say that conversation will take, uh, let's say each conversation is 10 minutes. That is an hour a day, 50 minutes to an hour a day in order to make 500,000. I don't know if that's the exact, that's different for every person depending on what your activities are and all that. But when you break it down, it is some, it becomes something manageable so that that increase is not so dramatic. It's something that you're like, hey, okay, I can do this. Keep building on the momentum that I have and add these few more strategies and we'll be good to go. All right, Robin. So I'm, I'm thinking, is it on? It's, is it on? It, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, we should print all these up and then I'm remembering, oh yeah, Bold already has a planner for the whole year with this page for every month. If you guys want to look at this, it's last year's book though. But um, when I signed up for maps coaching, I got it. So it's got this 411 for the month for January. Okay. So it breaks down annual, monthly, weekly. And then it goes into every single day, every hour of the day, what you're doing. And at the bottom of each day, it's got a, like how many contacts for that day? How many appointments? How many listings taken? How many buyers taken? How many is in your database? Or you could say how many touches to my database. And then at the bottom of that, and again, this is for every day of the week, it has that just to track your main things. 
But at the very bottom of that, it says how many total listings under contract, how many buyers. And then at the end of the week, there's a place to put notes. There's a quote. And then at the end of the week, it says how many closings this week, how many touches this week, and how many connections added to social media this week. And I feel like this encompasses everything we're doing and then keeps it going day to day and week to week. And if anyone's interested, I'm sure it's on, is it on KW ordering or the one thing or both? Yeah, it's somewhere in that ecosystem. We will help you find it. Okay. <laughs> Go to KW but it's something. called it's called Bold KW Maps Coaching. Yeah, is what's on the cover. See, yeah, yeah, you you can buy it. Well, or your if my maps coach gave me one for last year, but now I'm in the new year. So, but yeah, any anyone, there's so many resources online for so many things. But I think this, if 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 people are liking this plan. And it's simple enough once you've explained it, which I really appreciate. Like, let me translate this to one book that I'm checking every day, that I'm logging what I'm doing. So my maps coach every week asks me these questions that are on the bottom. And I'm like, I'm not tracking it that good. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I need to use this. So it's just taken me a few months to realize how helpful this would be and that it's exactly what I want to track. Right? It's all in one book. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of resources. The uh, The challenge is using it and doing it every day um but sorry you should move everything from your 411 should be on your calendar so it should live it should have a date and a time attached to it thank you okay and that brings us to the last piece which um is the accountability, the calendar, putting it on, on your, putting it somewhere. And on here, there's another guide. It's the kick-ass guide to accountability. Everything is, there's, all of these are named kick-ass something. Makes it cooler, I guess. Um, asking yourself these questions. Let me zoom into this and we'll end right here. Okay. This is something that, um, like Nick said, if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist, you're not gonna do it, or if you don't have a plan, um, if you're not gonna go and visit your workbook, the, whatever, the bold one, every single day, um, then it's not being utilized the best way possible. There's so many resources in there. Maybe it's on your calendar or a habit or that's something you need to change. Part of your daily, I need to change who I am today to tomorrow. I have some different actions so that I use these resources uh, to help me stay on track. Question, comment? Habit stacking. It's not, okay, so Atomic habits. Pick something that you already do every day. For example, I, for my whole real estate career of 17 years, I've tracked my hours, how many people I've contacted. I have, I, it's weird, but I do that. So now if I want to add some of this stuff, I'm thinking, well, I already do that. So let's add some of these other things that I need to track so that I'll do it. Right. And so you just think of things in your life. So if that helps somebody think of the things that you already do in your life, that you could easily do this at the same time. So it's not something that you commit to doing and then just forget because you're doing other things. Love that. Yep. And maybe that's part of your education. You don't have to use the education part on your GPS, but maybe that's maybe that book atomic habits is one of those things out on there. Um, okay. So we'll end with this. Accountability, it's so hard to change yourself, uh, dr like dramatically switch overnight without some shock to your system, right? We had some experiences, some examples of a shock to your system or um, some type of accountability in here. So the questions, this is, uh, the best thing is to have an accountability partner. Maybe that's one thing that you can do if you've read the One Thing book. All of these resources, by the way, I got from KW. Um, so all of these are, uh, are right there at your fingertips too. But if you're, if there's one thing that you do today, maybe that is find an accountability partner. Um, that would be something that you meet together religiously on a regular basis, maybe once a week, and you ask yourselves, ask each other these questions. If you don't have an accountability partner, then asking yourself these questions will be effective as well. And that is simply, uh, what were your goals last week? How did you do? 
How do you feel about that? Maybe you accomplished it. I feel great. Or I didn't accomplish it. Accomplish it and maybe I still feel great. Um, it could be that you feel great even if you didn't accomplish it because you gave it 100%. That's really all you can do every single time. Um, but how do you feel about it? Based on what you did, what are your new goal or what is your new goal and what do you need to do now for this following week? Because you're going to meet either with yourself or with someone else once a week. Um, is there anything that might keep you from meeting your new goals? If necessary, let's identify training solutions that will help support these goals. Okay. Um, anyone have a quick aha and like, just take 60 seconds or maybe two minutes and, and wrap it up with any ahas. Something that kind of stuck with you. Zoomers, you're welcome to chime in as well. Seeing like every movement here. Oh, wait. See, I almost came over to you. You, you like, you touch your hair. No one touch your hair right now if you don't want to talk. <laughs> okay, no ahas. Nothing. It was just great. A question, not a, not a, not an aha. Uh -huh. What do you think about? Uh, you said increasing your business by hundred percent is obvious, obviously like that's a crazy goal. Maybe, maybe not. I don't. I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't. You don't have to. Um. Yeah. Realistic. You should be able to. Yeah. It, it's totally up to you. Yep. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways to answer that, but it's different for every person. Yep. Okay. Tyler. No ahas. Wait, is someone speaking? I uh, Zoomer daily. I just wanted to add Please. something. Yes. <laughs> Um, I feel like this really gave me some clarity too, that I think it's important, like Nick said, to have everything on your calendar for the 411, but I think it's really important that, that at least for me, and I think for a lot of people that we build into that calendar time in between what we're working on to stop and make the notations and make not just like tracking the numbers, but actually make notes of what we just did so that we go don't get to the end of the day and we're i don't know overwhelmed might be a little bit dramatic but just we're it's just like so much to process that we just don't we just say i'm done for the day and we walk away and then we come back the next day and we lose sort of part of the momentum and some of the good things that we did the day before because we didn't take the time to write it down because we felt like we didn't have time to do that and i feel like too often i do back to back to back training or calls or whatever I'm doing and even appointments and just taking even five minutes in the car at the end of your appointment and making some notes to yourself. So you're not trying to keep that all in your head and feeling like you got it taken care of. And then you can successfully move on to the next thing you're doing. I don't know. I'm kind of rambling, but does anybody get what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've got some head nods happening in here. Thank you for your, that comment, Elise. Um, all right. Okay. I'm hoping that this, uh, helps you kind of jumpstart your new year. If you need to rethink some things and rethink it. Um, I think you all know, like there's, there's some action. There's something that you guys probably have said to yourself during this time. That's an obvious, this is what I should do next. And if you're not sure what that is, then go through the exercises and definitely go through, um, a journal entry type soul seeking, um, of what, you want and why you want that. Um, that will start you off on the rest of these exercises. And if you have any questions, reach out to me because I want to help on any of this. This is, I love this stuff. So thank you. Thanks for your comments. One of my favorite things that Nick taught me was um, if you, you raise, you must be placed on your calendar.